This is the posture, motion, and gait analysis of Emily Cook. Emily is a 13-year-old TNT gymnast working on trying to make the national team. This is the anterior view of the postural assessment. Going from head to toe, the left trap is higher and on an increased ankle. Her arms are internally rotated and her left hip is slightly higher than her right. Also, her left knee is bent slightly. This is the right lateral review. Her head and neck are slightly forward, along with her shoulders being anteriorly rotated. Her spine has a lordotic curve with the appearance of a slight abdominal pooch and an anteriorly tilted pelvis. We also notice that her elbow is not quite in line with her hip. This is the posterior view. Her left shoulder and elbow are higher than the right. Her left hip is also higher and her whole right side appears to be significantly lower. Her left popliteal crease is angled slightly more than the right, and her left Achilles is also at more of an angle. This is the left lateral view. Like the right lateral view, her neck and head are slightly forward. As seen with the right side, she has a lordotic curve, along with her upper back being slightly curved forward with rounded shoulders. Once again, her elbow is not quite in line with her hip, and her pelvis is anteriorly tilted. This is the motion analysis. Emily has impressive flexibility in her spine. Flexibility appears to be one of her strong points. Her flexibility and great range of motion makes us confident that we can take her from good to great. During her right and left lateral foot reach, we're reaching out with her right foot, she seems to be weaker than when she's reaching with her left foot. She uses her arms for balance, but when reaching with her right foot, she compensates more, and as soon as she begins her movement, her core is immediately disengaged. When reaching her left and right feet forward, she has difficulty keeping her balance and locks out both of her knees, rather than bending the knee of her grounded foot to reach further. When performing the right and left rotation with the pole, she leans forward and to the side because her core is weak. Her ankles appear to be unstable as well. During her right and left one-legged squats, her knees turn inward. Her whole firing sequence is off, which starts with her core not allowing her glutes, hamstrings, and quads to fire correctly making her knees unstable. She also leans very far forward again due to her weak core. In her ipsilateral left and right one leg squats, her firing sequence is still off, not allowing her to fully extend her body, which could possibly force her off balance, making her fall. The movement she performs is what she is most comfortable with. In her seated non-weight-bearing stance, her left heel is slightly off the ground and her left Achilles is at more of an angle than the right. The left hip is higher along with her left elbow. During her barefoot walking gait, she walks introverted with her knees collapsing inward. Her right arm swings more forward than her left and her left swings more outward than her right. When walking with shoes on, her antiversion fixes itself somewhat, but not completely. Her knees continue to collapse inward, also. During her wide walking gait, it is still apparent that her knees fall inward. Her right arm swings forward and backward while her left arm mainly stays in front of her body. In her narrow walking gait, her arms barely move at all and her knees still turn in slightly. She takes her steps very carefully so she doesn't trip. Her scissor gait is very off balance and she seems to be walking more on the side of her foot. 
Her left stride is further across than the right. In her long stride gait, her knees greatly collapse when she plants her foot. She also swings both of her arms very far to keep her balance. During her fast stride gait, her knees don't seem to be collapsing quite as much, and she is not as antiverted as before. In her jogging gait, she jogs on the balls of her feet and points her toes. Her knees also collapse inward slightly. Her heels never come in contact with the ground and she balls her fist downward while swinging her arms upward. At 75% of her sprint, her heels still aren't coming in contact with the ground and her feet have moved into retrovision with the left more noticeable than the right. In her sprinting gait, her heels still do not come in contact with the ground. She keeps her arms tight to her body. She also keeps her ankles under her knees and her feet become even more retroverted. While assessing Emily's posture, motion, and gait, we came to the conclusion that her knees collapsing inward was functional because it wasn't present in her posture and it fixed itself when she was running and it even started to go in the other direction. Her antiversion was also functional because it fixed itself in the running gait and she even went into a retroversion. We also found that her rounded shoulders were functional due to her tight pecs. Her weak power pack was also functional. Her lordotic curve is structural, however we can improve this by strengthening her abdominals. We plan on taking her from good to great with a well structured training program. The training program would include core strengthening through stability ball exercises such as crunches and push-ups with feet on the ball, along with other core exercises like trunk twists with a med ball and planks with leg lifts. We would also strengthen her back and upper body with dumbbell flies, pull-ups, lat pull-downs, and handstands against the wall. And we would also strengthen her legs with lunges and squats. 